27, 1922, and lightweight champion Benny Leonard defends his world title against the great Southpaw challenger, Lou Tendler. What's going on, family? I'm Scrap of Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. I did a video on Benny Leonard. He's my rank number nine greatest fighter of all times. My computer was down and I couldn't show a video, so I'm going to do that now. Shout out to Xavier the Boxing Nerd. He reminded me of this fight being on YouTube. So I'm showing this to you now. This fight took place in Boyer's Acres in New Jersey. The incomparable champion, Benny Leonard. Phenomenal fighter was Benny Leonard. And Lou Tendler out of Philadelphia. As round one gets underway, there's an electric excitement throughout the jam-packed arena. This is a dream match. The champion is a magnificent boxer whose unequaled ability has confounded 81 opponents since he won the World Lightweight Championship five years ago in 1917 from Freddie Welch. Lou Tendler, who has the unorthodox southpaw stance, leading with his right hand, is in the prime of his magnificent career. Lou turned professional nine years ago in 1913, and during the past nine years, he has lost only three of 85 professional fights and has never been stopped. The 24-year-old Tendler was born in 1898 and started his career as a bantamweight. At the age of 15, he was earning $17 as a main event fighter. Now, nine years later, he's in the process of earning $116,000 for one fight. While Leonard is relying on his beautiful boxing ability, watch Tendler pump in four powerful lefts to Benny's body. That type of punching will slow up any fight. Because of Tendler's fearless attitude in the ring, plus his extraordinary punching ability, he is considered by boxing experts to be one of the greatest southpaw fighters in the entire history of boxing, regardless of division. Benny is boxing smartly as Tendler tries to charge in with a left to the body. Leonard sidesteps and Tendler nearly goes flying out of the ring. The champion, Benny Leonard, turned professional in 1911. He has the fantastic record of having lost only three times in 195 professional prize fights. The fighters who have attempted to beat Leonard as a group are a who's who of boxing. Rocky Kansas, Richie Mitchell, Johnny Dundee, Willie Ritchie, Ted Kid Lewis, Freddie Welch, a group of fighters unsurpassed in any period of boxing, were all unsuccessful in their attempts to get a single win over Benny Leonard. The referee separates the fighters as we get to the end of round one. sounds for the start of round three. In round two, Leonard continued to box masterfully against the difficult, unorthodox southpaw style of challenger Tenler. Lou pressed the champion throughout the round and set up blistering pace. But here, in round three, the fight is settling down to exactly what the boxing experts had predicted. A hard-punching, fearless challenger against a master ring technician who has time and again demonstrated his ability to thwart the efforts of the very finest fighters in the division. Freddie Welsh, May 28, 1917, to gain the world's lightweight championship. It was generally agreed, in spite of the great fighters in the lightweight division, that Leonard's extraordinary ability would hold the lightweight championship for many years to come. Benny has disappointed no one. The past five years, as lightweight champion of the world, Benny has been virtually the most nearly perfect fighting machine that the boxing world has ever seen. It is in fact a testimonial to the superb unorthodox style of Lou Tendler that knowledgeable boxing men have given him an excellent chance to do something that not one of the present greats in the lightweight division could come close to doing, taking the lightweight championship of the world from the phenomenal Benny Leonard. Leonard steps in with a right, but gets hit with a right from the sharp counter-punching Tendler. Just eight weeks ago, Tendler won a sensational 15-round decision over knockout-punching Johnny Dundee. This tremendous victory, though not unexpected, catapulted Fiery Lou into this world lightweight championship fight with champion Leonard. It can't be said that there was a cordial feeling between the two men. Benny and Lou were scheduled to fight one year ago in 1921. Each man agreed to put up a $5,000 forfeit price in the event that the fight didn't take place. When the fight date approached, Benny announced that he wouldn't be able to go through with it, as he had broken a hand in training. Lou felt that Leonard wasn't really hurt, so Tendler claimed and received the forfeit of $5,000.
Leonard demanded the return of the money, and Lou refused. When the two men finally got together this evening, it could be said in all fairness that this is something of a grudge fight. Leonard is using his left jab like a stained dart, but Tendler shoots three hard rights to the body. Lou is confident that those body shots will eventually slow up the champion. Benny continues to use that left as we get to the end of round three. We move now to round eight. In round... Lou steps in and rips a left to the jaw of the champion. The blow staggers Benny as his knees... Woo! See how Leonard instinctively catches hold of Tim. Benny whispers to Lou, you're getting a little fresh, kid. I'm going to nail you in the next round. Benny's glib tongue gives him those few extra precious seconds, which he so desperately needs after stopping one of Tedler's vicious straight left-hand punches. Throughout the remainder of the round, Benny calls upon his vast experience and superb boxing ability in order to stave off the feet. That was the first time Leonard felt the full force of Tedler's tremendous punching strength. Now Benny knows he can't take any more liberties with this young kid from Philadelphia. Leonard had been warned repeatedly prior to the fight that Tedler can take you out of there with one punch. Leonard's only comment was, no matter how hard a man throws a punch, it has to land on the target to be effective. Leonard is fighting a strictly defensive battle here in the eighth round. Tedler is more confident now. He's landed that big left hand on the champion's jaw, and he's certain he can do it again. fought Charlie White, White staggered Leonard to his heels with a smashing left-right combination. Just when everyone thought the fight was all but over, including Charlie White, Leonard landed a crushing right to the jaw, and the fight was over in 10 seconds. Teller knows that Leonard is extremely dangerous when he's hurt, so the challenger can't abandon his defense while he's carrying the attack to Benny. draws to a close, Leonard has survived the toughest round he's fought in 10 years. Leonard came into his own in the ninth round, boxing smartly throughout the three-minute period. Here in round 10 of this scheduled 12-round lightweight championship contest, the result is still very much in doubt. Both men are putting on a spectacular performance at what they do best. Leonard steps in and lands a sharp right hand to the head, but Tedler has fiery determination and presses the champion relentlessly. Leonard continuously showing the great boxing style which has received such extravagant praise from every corner of the boxing world. The champion's real name is Benjamin Leiner. He was born in 1896, 26 years ago. Leonard made his debut as a professional fighter when he was only 15 years old at the Fairmont Athletic Club under Billy Gibson, later his manager and also the manager of Gene Tunney. Benny took the name of Betty Leonard after the announcer of that first fight, having difficulty pronouncing the name Leiner, referred to him as Leonard. Benny has used the name ever since. Leonard, even at the present time during his active career, is ranked with the two greatest boxers in the history of Fistiana, Joe Gans and Young Grippo. He has a piston-like left jab and has no equal in professional boxing in the manner in which he employs the feint. This is what the crowd came to see, to get the answer to the age-old question, can a master boxer beat a tremendous puncher? round of this great championship fight gets underway. Round 11 was very close with neither fighter gaining a clear-cut advantage. Leonard, the master boxer, knows that he only has to last the round in order to keep his championship. Here in 1922, the no decision rule had been put into effect. This rule makes it impossible for Benny to lose his championship by the decision of the judges. Lou has to knock him out in order to win, and he came very close to doing just that in the eighth round. Experts have made Leonard a slight favor tonight, but everyone knows that anything can happen when you get a man with a determination, the fighting heart, and the knockout punch of Lou Tedler. Prior to the fight, 
former lightweight champion of the world, Freddie Welsh, said that the Leonard Tedler fight was a contest that even the experts would all disagree in trying to pick the winner. Welsh said the difficulty was both men were experts at the style they each employed, and it was a case of the immovable object being struck by the unstoppable force. It's no wonder that there weren't enough seats in Boyle's 30 acres to hold all of the fans that wanted to get in. As the round draws to a close, it's apparent to everyone that they have just seen one of the great ring classics of all time. Forty years later, these two fighting giants will be the yardstick used to measure the champions who came after them. There's the bell ending the fight. Later, years later, these two fighting giants will be the yardstick used to measure the champions who came after them. There's the bell ending the fight. Leonard fought like the master he is. Courageous, brilliant. Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Shout out to Benny Leonard. Number nine. New York, October 7, 1932, 10 rounds. Babyface Jimmy McClellan versus Benny Leonard. Leonard on the comeback trail. He retired way back in 1924. And now here it is in 1932 as he fights to become once again one of the ring's best. Benny Leonard backing off against Jimmy McClellan. Babyface Jimmy McClellan with tremendous punching power in both hands. Benny Leonard a boxing master, and quite a puncher himself. The referee is Arthur Donovan. Since Leonard's return, he's had 19 bouts. He scored 7 KOs. He drew in 1, winning 11. He's far from the old Leonard, though, and tonight is his first great test against an outstanding opponent, Jimmy McClellan. Benny Leonard had made a great deal of money in the ring. McClellan almost goes down with that right cross by Leonard. But McClellan is young and strong. And he battles back now. That sneaky fast right hand punch by Benny Leonard. Leonard lost much of his money in the stock market crash of 1929. He hasn't lost much of his punching power though. The right cross by Jimmy McClellan. McClellan is only 26 years old. Benny Leonard is now 36 years old at the time of this fight. Boxing flat-footed. Good punching power with Benny Leonard. McClellan likes to get in and mix it. McClellan now beating Leonard to the punch. Benny Leonard, unquestionably one of the greatest of all time. Leonard now weighing 150 and a half. McClellan 147 and a half. On the ropes, that left hook sent him back into the ropes. Now he's holding on. Coming out now for round two, scheduled 10 rounder at Madison Square Garden. Tremendous crowd, more than 21,000 on hand. The largest crowd up to that point to see a bout at Madison Square Garden. Leonard, 10 years older than Jimmy McClellan. Leonard, managed by Billy Gibson, McClellan by Pop Foster. McClellan swarming all over Benny Leonard. And he looks as though he might be hurt. But he fights back with a straight left jab. Catching some of those punches on his gloves and elbows and wrists. McClellan keeps boring in. McClellan particularly effective with a left hand. A left hook. He's a hooker.
Randy Leonard, KG and Wise, the ring veteran, fighting back now, dancing out of range, keeping that left jab in baby face Jimmy McClellan's face. Leonard, not nearly as fast as he used to be, but still ring wise and game strong. Seems to have recovered now from that knockdown in the second. That's the end. in trouble. Jimmy McClellan wailing away. Straight left by McClellan. A right cross by McClellan. McClellan with a right hook. And Benny Lennon is hurt. He's staggering, covering up. He's stumbling all over the ring now as McClellan goes after him. Benny Lennon in deep trouble. And still he doesn't go down. He stays on his feet, taking the punishment. Arthur Donovan looking at Benny.